Hi everyone, my name is Olivia and I was part of crew at UC Santa Barbara. I graduated last year and then I moved to the Bay Area in Alameda um, where I now work for San Francisco City Impact, which is a nonprofit in the Tenderloin of San Francisco. Um, I'm part of the development team and our donor relations team there, and it's been an amazing experience. Um, definitely a transition coming out of Santa Barbara, but I'm happy to be here in the Bay. Hello guys, my name is Giovanni. Um, I recently graduated from San Francisco State. I was part of crew for like my whole, from like freshman year to like senior year at San Francisco State, um, as well as be able to part, be, be a part of I'm starting Destino at San Francisco State. Hello, my name is Lydia Clinton. I graduated from Point Park in 2016 with a dance major. And I currently dance professionally in San Francisco, Oakland, and a little bit in Berkeley. I also teach, do arts administration, and assist a ceramic artist as well. I have, have a lot of jobs. Um, but I'm here to answer some of your questions that you have. Hey crew seniors, my name is Joey and um, I'm super excited to be able to share with you today. I went to San Jose State. Um, I was a transfer student, came in at, in 2011. Um, I graduated in 2014 in accounting and information systems and through that journey God really solidified my faith. I transferred to San Jose State not really planning <laughs> to be a part of a church community. But God used a lot of different circumstances to draw me to him and to get me to see the importance of a dependency on him. Hey there seniors, my name is Hannah Kern reporting to you live from San Francisco, California under shelter in place. Um, I graduated from UC Davis in 2014 with a bachelor's in civil engineering. Um, I got my master's two years later and I've been working in the Bay Area ever since. Hi guys. For me, the biggest theme here is intentionality and just how difficult it is to find community when it's not surrounded, when you're not in school, when you don't go to crew or maybe your church has changed or you moved to a different city. Um, that, for, that was my case. And so community has looked like a lot of going to San Francisco. I've seen a lot of you. <laughs> um, I may or may not have stayed in your house. Um, and a lot of long distance friendships and phone calls and, and carving time out of my schedule to have life-giving relationships and friendships. So intentionality is the biggest one for me. Well, for me, community has been mostly around my family. Um, I moved back home in a city called Conquer, like right across the bay. Um, I started work right after college. Um, fortunately, was able to find a job and still currently working. Um, there, I was able to grow a um, uh, community within um, the within work. Um, a lot of my fellow co-workers, some were in the military, so they were part of a, what's it called? like some sort of crew that they had there. I started coaching at a local high school of volleyball before COVID-19 started this year. Um, that also became a big part of my community. Started teaching youth um, to grow within their faith and in the sport, um, to have a passion, especially the school that I coach at, it's a very low income school, um, really helped them, uh, motivated them you know, to hopefully go to college and to be inspired but that's what has been my community mostly um, family and friends around um, back home for some people that comes really naturally and for others it might not and that's totally okay um, but much like coming into college for the first time your freshman year or if you're a transfer you're kind of thrown into this pile of people and it's up to you to figure out how to make friends and to connect with people and find things that you relate to them with and so similarly, when you start a job or you're just out in the world post-grad, it's kind of the same thing. But the reality is that a lot of people aren't going to be around your same age or maybe not in the same life stage. But you could still discover a lot of richness and friendship with people who are different than you and just learn a lot about what 
other people's lives look like. Like the married couple you might befriend or someone who's a lot older than you or maybe some coworkers or whoever it is. And you start to build on these relationships that are just naturally in your life um, after college. And so uh, it's also really important that you connect with a really good church, a solid community, faith community that you're able to pour into and find friendships there as well. But I think when it comes to making friends, it's just, it happens. It's natural and the Lord will bring that to you if you're just open to, you know, talking to people, putting yourself out there, finding things that you love and then finding that in other people too. And yeah, it's, it'll be okay. You're going to make friends and it'll be fun. It'll be different, but it'll be really fun. Yes and no. Um, I think for maintaining old relationships, that was difficult for me. One of my friends from college, who's my best friend, um, she had to call me out a little bit and she was like, we need to, or you need to be more part of my life and all of these things. And I was just like, what? And so I was so focused of like, oh, if I don't see you, then our relationship is different, which is true, but it doesn't mean that we can't be a part of each other's lives. So I had to learn a lot about intentionality and the way that I interact with people and how often I interact with them makes a huge difference. Um, so there are some people where I, like my best friend, I will we schedule times to talk. So I'll text her once a week. Um, there's another friend from college uh, who we talk on the phone once a month and we just do that. Uh, and then people that I'm meeting now, I am intentional with texting them and setting time with them. So say, and so instead of saying like, oh, we should hang out, um, I say that, but I also follow up with, okay, when are you available? When can we do that? So it is being intentional. And then also sending out like the random text or calling a random friend and being like, hey, I miss you and I, you're on my mind today. So I think that's, I think that's another way that I maintain friendships. I'd say yes to both of those. Um, so stay connected to your community, phone calls, text, it'll look different. Um, the number of people you probably are in contact with might lessen, but I will say like, what, 10 years after I started undergrad, some of the girls from my freshman Bible study are still my best friends. And like we keep in touch and call and share life and visit and it's like such a sweet blessing to have friends from that season um, like continue into different seasons of life. Um, so it's how you communicate with humans is you, you talk, you pray, you like have hard conversations and you like grit it out. Um, and I also did find a new community to help me in my faith. I think it's really important to have people physically present walking alongside life with you. Um, and while a lot of your crew friends might become like virtual phone call, like vacation friends, um, I think the like church community that you become a part of post-grad is like of utmost importance. And like, they might be people really different from you. They might be 10 years older. They might have kids. They might be really hard to get along with, but it's like such a sweet thing to experience community in that way. And that's kind of been my experience. I joined church when I moved back to the Bay Area about four years ago and it took a little while, but I think like learning to live and walk alongside people who are very different, who have different backgrounds, who even honestly have some theological views. I'm like, what? That's different. Um, it's just been so sweet to have in life and so yeah, I think you will find, com your community will change over time. And I think the important question is like, do you have community who is walking alongside you?